Hi, I'm Sean from Hello Games. Uh, I'm a programmer working on No Man's Sky. And in No Man's Sky, we're trying to create this infinite procedural universe. Um, and I guess I wanted to explain, or at least try to explain a little bit of how that works. First place that we start is here with this galactic map. And we actually generate this entire galaxy of stars and every single one of those stars has its own solar system with planet-sized planets filled with, with life and ecology. So to start here, if you imagine a sheet of graph paper and it's like an infinitely scrolling sheet of graph paper and we choose at random certain squares on that grid and just color them in. And those are our stars. So if you imagine that in 3D and then you imagine it kind of warped by shapes and spirals and spheres and things like that, then it gives you these really pretty patterns, but it also gives you something quite realistic to our own kind of galaxy that we're in. So we start with that and then we generate the planets around it. And so here we are, are on a planet and it's kind of cool, it's different to other games that I've played in that this is a planet-sized planet. Like I can walk in any direction for days and days and weeks and weeks if I want and I'll walk all the way around the planet eventually and come right back around to where I started. And it will go from day to night and back to day again. And that's just because we're orbiting around a sun, like a real sun. So that's kind of cool. It's, you know, normally we would be in a level designed by artists and things like that. And the way that works, actually, which is really different, I suppose, is that everything that you see around you is generated. So the terrain, the water, the trees, the foliage, and the life on the planet, the creatures, they're generated and they're generated by maths. If I go to a planet, what you see is generated just as you go there. The input to the maths is where you're stood um, and the output is everything that's on screen. So if two people go to the same planet, they'll see exactly the same thing. If I go to a planet, I will always see the same thing, but it's generated there and then, it's put on the graphics card, it's rendered to the screen. And if I fly away, then it's all just thrown away. But if I come back again, it will be generated again exactly the same way because, because of maths, and maths always works out the same. So all we have to do as programmers is just create the algorithms that create the things that you see, the terrain, everything else, the creatures. So I can give you examples of that. I can show you some of the creatures that are on this planet and kind of how they're created. Uh, so if we pop into the editor, this is an example of one of the fish that you'll find on some of the planets. And actually what happens here is a fish is created as like almost like a silhouette by our artists. And then the code basically mutates and changes that. Kind of like if you imagine an MMO and you take your character and you can slide all the different sliders and create any type of character that you want in the same way our artists create a fish. And then they can create the, the code the program creates every variant of fish that you could imagine. So if I click this button, which allows me to view variants, then you'll see that you get just an array of fish and I can select any of those and I can view variants of them. And I can just do that hundreds of times and I will see hundreds of different variants. And it's not just fish, like if I select some of the other creatures, then you can see kind of slightly more weird, more alien creatures, and we can view variants of those. And each one of those can be created on the planet with its own set of behaviors, its own set of properties, we, we give it a brain separately. So how it behaves is, is separate to how it looks. But we try and take more mutated char uh, characters and creatures and say, well, they're probably a bit more aggressive. You know, they tend to have horns or antlers or weird appendages or whatever, then they're probably a little bit uglier and they look a bit more aggressive. Maybe if they're bigger, they're a bit mean as well. And it's not just their like look, it's also their animation that adapts to how they look. So if they have bigger heads, if they're created, born into the, like our world with bigger heads, then they'll walk slightly differently. If they have six legs, then they'll have different IK as they walk around the planet, and they'll behave differently because of that. That's kind of how we generate creatures, and it's not just creatures, it's buildings, it's all the life that you see around you, so fish and birds, but also ships, and even your weapon. Really, they're just the dressing, things like trees, grass, stuff like that. They are the, the aesthetics. What really changes the gameplay is the terrain, and the terrain is kind of procedurally generated too. 
And so I can show you how that works a little bit. If I pop out into God mode, so I'll go into the free cam, and then I can just fly around a little bit. You can see that the terrain is being generated around me, and it's not just the terrain of this planet, but the terrain of if you see other planets hanging on the skyline, on the horizon. Those are generated in full too. As I fly towards them, or as I fly through the terrain that we're on here, it generates around you in higher and higher detail. Kind of what we would call level of detail in games. Normally that would be created by an artist. For us, it's just created by maths. So actually, whenever I'm stood on a planet, I don't see rocks and mountains and things like that. I can see the mathematical formulas just really well. I can be like, right, I'm stood in a kind of a Fourier transform area, or I'm stood on some like differential equations, basically. But for most people, it just looks like some mountain-like mountains. And that actually means that we can just fly around this planet for, like I said, days and days, and it will always look different and it won't repeat. But also, at the click of a button, we can change everything about the shape of this planet. So for instance, we can change the terrain entirely without changing the creatures or anything like that. And I often, like that's kind of how I work, I'm that guy. I just give you an example, I can just quickly click generate and get like a new terrain basically. And we'll get new features, new mountains, new rock formations, that kind of thing. This is all within the same planet, so it doesn't change the creatures and stuff right now, but it gives you a sense of how powerful this is. Um, so I can click it a few more times. And we can go from planets that are entirely kind of formed of beaches um, and have like no mountains to things that are entirely mountainous, you know, planets that are entirely barren or whatever. So now they're like cave formations that weren't there before. And like underwater, you're getting these kind of crazy ravines and everything just works. You know, fish will just inhabit these, ships will just land at buildings that automatically get placed, AI will just work around it. And that's because everything is kind of working off these same algorithms. But what's cool is that this simulation is kind of happening not just at a kind of micro level like this, where you have life and creatures, but it's also happening at a kind of a, a larger scale. So if I like, start to zoom out, you can see that even though there are like shoals of fish down here, there's a whole planet out there just kind of working away. And this is happening at that, that kind of planetary level, but it's also happening at a more like solar system level and a more galactic level. So I can just pull out of this quite quickly. And you can see moons of that planet, uh, which will be orbiting around other planets kind of hanging around in the distance. And those stars out in the sky are actually like real places. It's not just a drawing of some stars. Those are kind of light of distant suns that will have their own solar systems just like this. That's what's really different about No Man's Sky. That's the thing that's unique. It's, I guess, giving this kind of, for me, a science fiction fantasy that I always wanted to see in games, even since I was like a little kid. That infinite universe is, is real, and so it makes sense to kind of go out and explore it. And people who play the game will be exploring it in a very real way. Thank <laughs> you.